Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Tuesday, April the 3rd, 2018. Let's talk trading. But I'm away. But I've got my uh, travel laptop. Um, and so I thought I'd see if uh, I could do a little uh, video for you. So what do you do when you're away? Do you still trade or do you give it a rest? You, you probably trade. Just be honest, you can't you just can't stay away, right? It's tough. I mean, even and maybe even if you're not trading, your eyes still on the market. You know, you're pulling it up on your cell phone, you know, maybe once an hour, maybe more. But I guess once trading gets in your blood, you just can't help yourself. So let's see. One thing you can help, though, a little segue into the money and risk management screen. If you've been with me this year, you've seen this screen how many times? <laughs> but once again, it's a, just a little reminder to remember Pay attention to your position size and your stop loss because you don't want to have that one big loss that wipes you out. And as you can see here, all the gaps have filled so far this week. So no April Fool's. I hope you all had a nice Easter and April Fool's Day. <laughs> Pretty couple good jokes on the internet about it. So I've got the dollar yen up on the screen. I think maybe... We'll flip around um, on the pairs. Maybe we'll switch every day since we have been doing a pair a month. I haven't decided because I'm away. So, yeah, just to let you guys know where I'm at, um, I'm at a preparedness workshop. So, those of you who know who watch some of my other videos know that I'm a prepper I prepare an old survivalist from back in the 80s so that's what I'm focused on this week but you can see here weekly we were in the previous week's wick zone and we're actually crawling back into it so maybe just maybe can pop out the top And you can see here on the daily, we're still in the daily wick zone. And we can see if we'll pop out of the top of that one. If you look here on the daily, uh, one thing, the midpoint of this candle is somewhere right around there. And you can see, it looks like we probably had about, oh, what a 78% pullback so the fib guys definitely uh, were rewarded those who use the Fibonacci numbers I used to use them a long time ago but then I came to the point where I don't believe in magic numbers anymore I just don't But that being said, since there's a lot of people who do, you can uh, exploit that, use it to your advantage, and uh, make some pips. And we're looking at the buy zone here. A short, a long. Hopefully you took your profit here. Once again, where... No, I don't have my mouse. I'm just using the pad. I can't get my crosshairs. Um, right here you had price go up drop back into the previous candles wick zone you can see here when it pulled back so that's one place where you, your profit um, should have been taken because you can see here it went all the way to the bottom if you took that short you had to take a loss but you were rewarded the next hour and once again here you can see nothing but what 
higher highs and higher lows. So you still might be in the trade or you may have taken your profit off the table. But either way, nice payoff. And you can see here there wasn't much of a rat zone at this time. Right here, rat zone would have, wouldn't have happened yet. Well, that wouldn't have exited the rat zone. So you can see here the red rats are about to be paid off. If price can come back this way. And the pivot traders, once again, fading the pivot. You buy at or near the open. You trade towards the pivot. And you take profit accordingly. And you can also look at your daily and monthly pivots. Here's your weekly pivot. Here's your monthly And there was your, so you can see it's already hit all three pivots. So it's probably heading toward either the R1 pivots for the week in the month or the S1 pivots for the week in the month. Price action. Right now, what is price action telling you? We've got a two ball on the top. It has already crossed below these two highs. It's about to exit the wick zone of this candle into the body of the candle. It might be time to take some profit. Of course, you can wait it out. Maybe you could say, I'll stop the loss right here at the 25 psychological number. Oh, that's the 20. I'm sorry. But um, I was looking at, at the 25 here, thinking this was a 25. It's early. So... You might say, okay, right here. If it goes red and hits this line, I will exit. Otherwise, I'll let it waffle around. But also, at the same time here, you can see, oh, I think I have these screens in a different order than the other one. You can see here, upper wick zone of the daily so you maybe you would exit here that would give back about 10 pips or you can see right here at the 24 4 right around the 25 that is the highest open so if price comes back down through might be time if you're in the trade long to exit if you're not in a trade you could think about a short at that area but I would be careful in the shorts because you can see here we've got a nice movement to the upside So on the short, if you take that short, see right there, you got the trigger. It's triggering.
I just thought I'd leave it up there so you guys could just watch how the indicator reacts. So you can see right here when price is inside the holo zone, it tells you what you can do. But I'm going to have to update this because obviously this is um, this account has either different um, leverage or something, but those numbers looked a little on the uh, off side because you, I don't think you can have uh, 10 lots <laughs> with a thousand dollar account because you would have like a 48% risk. I'll have to put that on the to-do list. Okay, you can see here what's happening. Selling, we're using the spread dots indicator. Oh yeah, let's see, just so you can see what indicators. The 2018 spread dots. It's saying time to exit. Or, that's if you were long. So once again, spread dots. We've got the uh, lowest ask and the highest bid price. And those will flip when if the bid gets above the uh, ask valley. Then we're in the buying mode. And if the um, ask gets below the highest bid, then we're in the selling mode. See how it just flipped? And if you hit F9, you can see right here when the bid got below that valley of the ask, it switched into buying mode. Based on a very simple principle I observe, price can't go up unless the bid goes above that lowest ask, and price can't come down unless the ask goes below the highest bid. Otherwise, price isn't going that direction. So, I'm going to wrap things up with, with that. Um, so, if you have any questions, <laughs> Um, and you ask them, you can go ahead. I might not get to them till next week because right now I'm uh, more uh, focused in the in prepping, um, emergency preparedness, disaster preparedness. Because you see, if you uh, fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. That's how I usually end my um, preparation videos. But since we're trading, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. The Rumpled One signing off. You guys need to go drain the banks.